Hi everyone, it's Martha from Martha Book Dragon and welcome to my slightly more festive Christmassy shelves because there's twinkly lights in the background. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about a few books that would make great gifts um, around this festive season for friends, family, anybody bookish, anybody who likes you know, likes books essentially because they are all books um, but if you've got anybody that you think you'd like to buy for something that seems quite seasonal and quite nice to buy um yeah I've got some suggestions also you could just buy them for yourself because yeah it is the season to be kind to yourself as well as others okay um I've got a selection of fiction and non-fiction here though you'll see that some of them have got collections of themes so if we start with the fiction I have two books that are ghost stories, which I don't know about anybody else, but for some reason I always feel is very seasonal. Um, so yeah, I don't know, it's something about cozying up by the fire with twinkly lights in the winter evenings, reading ghost stories, I don't know, yeah, it seems kind of cool. Um, so my first one is uh, Ghost Stories by, um, it's a vintage collection by E.F. Benson. Um, these are sort of early, early 20th century um, ghost stories. Um, sort of is, E.F. Benson is sort of part of the tradition of sort of M.R. James and stuff, but he's a bit different. He's a bit more... Um, a bit less, maybe less spooky, a bit more sort of modern grounded, but I did really enjoy these. Um, I got given this as a birthday gift kindly from my cousin um, a couple of months ago and I really enjoyed it and I also took the opportunity to part read it from the book and part listen to the audiobook which is actually um, by Mark Gatiss which I really enjoyed um, listening to as well because there's quite a lot of humour in here like they're, they're quite spooky stories but they're quite funny as well um, yeah if you've got uh, somebody who's an aficionado of ghost stories who likes M.R. James likes vintage style ghost stories this one is a great idea and then something that's a bit more modern, but has got a bit of a twist to it. So this is the English Heritage Book of Ghost Stories, Eight Ghosts. And it's basically a collection um, of different modern authors who've been asked to write, um, sorry, it's a bit of a glare on that one, um, been asked to write ghost stories based on different English heritage properties around the UK. So you can see on the front here, we've got the likes of Mark Haddon, Sarah Perry, Jeanette Winterson, Camilla Shamsey, um, and they all write, they all have taken one um, place and that's where they're writing about. So just as an example, in my, my um, the city that I live in, uh, Mark Haddon has written a story based on the York... Um, Cold War Bunker and um, Sarah Perry has written one based on Audley End House which is in I believe in Essex. Um, they're really good little ghost stories and also interesting for anybody that you know that might be interested in historic properties, um, history, museums, that sort of thing. This is a really good recommendation actually I think this is um, this would be perfect for that sort of person in your life and also if you just enjoy ghost stories anyway they are really good. <laughs> So my next two fiction ones are also in a similar category, as in they are uh, collections of short crime stories by two very well-known authors. Um, again, something about winter makes me feel like crime is a good, a good place to enjoy. What am I even saying? Um, crime is a good genre to enjoy in the dark. Yeah, okay, let's go with that fine. Uh, so the first one that I've got here is uh, P.D. James which is The Mistletoe Murder and Other Stories. So this is a, a small collection of um, crime stories from the I'd say probably the modern queen, queen of crime, the late modern queen of crime. Um, there's just some spooky stuff in here, there's some really good little stories that are sort of um, psychological thrillers as well. I really enjoyed it. I'm not sure how super Christmassy it is, like they're not all really really Christmassy but they're certainly all sort of wintry and dark. Um, yeah I'd really recommend this if you know somebody who really enjoys crime novels and they haven't tried this it's a great one. And then from one queen of crime to another 
the other one I would suggest is this new collection I don't know if it is new but it's new to me anyway I bought it a few weeks ago and this is a Midwinter Murder Agatha Christie so this is a collection of the description would be fireside mysteries from the Queen of Crime um see I think we probably all know who Agatha Christie is. We all know that her speciality is cosy crimes. I presume that this collection is just lots of ones that are around Christmas, around the winter period. And I mean, it's just a really beautiful book as well. It's a lovely book to give as a gift, um, even to yourself, as demonstrated by me buying this for myself. Um, yeah, I think this one would probably be perfect for, again, anybody who enjoys cozy crime in your life and also anybody who loves a really pretty book look at the shine on that <laughs> right so those are all of my fiction recommendations and now i'm gonna go on to my non-fiction so the first one that i have um it's a bit of an unusual one so this is uh, treasure palaces uh, great writers visit great museums so this is again a collection this is a collection of essays from lots of different writers around the world so there's a certain number around here so Michael Moore Pergo, John Burnside, Alan Hollinghurst, um, Julian Barnes, Alice Oswald, Anne Patchett, just lots and lots of different writers who've been to different museums around the world and written an essay about about various different things relating to it. Sometimes it was just them visiting, sometimes they're interesting sort of stories about the museum itself that they wanted to write about. But there's lots of different ones in here. So um, just an example, um, Ali Smith is writing about the Villa Saint-Michel in Capri. Um, Michael Morpurgo, the Flanders Fields Museum in Ypres. Um, William Boyd, the Leopold Museum in Vienna. Um, there's a huge collection of different ones in here and again it's probably good for a friend that you know who might enjoy going to museums, might enjoy travel, different cultures. Um, yeah it's a really unusual one actually. I've not seen anybody ever talk about this but I really enjoyed it when I read it and I think I might reread it again soon because the essays in here were really interesting. Lots of different thoughts and feelings that people had about going to museums and um, just about the nature of heritage itself and how that relates to them feeling as a writer. Um, yeah, I'd really recommend this one. Then the last two I've got are actually from the same author who I really rate um, and that is Judith Flanders. So she writes um, a lot of Victorian history, usually sort of Victorian social history. So she's written various different books about sort of the leisure, um, leisure and pastimes in the Victorian period. And so one that I really highly rate is um, is particularly good for if you've got a true crime buff in your life. Um, so we're quite hidden. Like, I'm a bit of a true crime buff. I do enjoy a true crime podcast um, and a true crime book. And sometimes they're a little bit hidden, people keep it to themselves, um, it's a bit of an odd hobby. But this one is really perfect for that person in your life. So this is The Invention of Murder. How the Victorians revelled in death and detection and created modern crime by Judith Flanders. So this one is quite a chunky tome, but it is a really interesting look at the development of the newspapers and the development of the reporting of crime in the newspapers and in the written word in general. So sort of talking about scandal sheets and the development of uh, crime stories being written as well. Obviously you've got um, towards the end of the Victorian period, you've got Sherlock Holmes, but there's lots of ones before that. And you know, the way that famous crime stories were made into plays. This is a really interesting one. Like I love all of Judith Flanders' work, but if you're gonna try something from her, this one is really great. It's a really interesting look at the way that, well, essentially the way that um, the Victorians really enjoyed reading and, you know, reading about, watching plays about, and talking about crime um, and interesting crime stories. And I think it is a really interesting look at where our obsession with crime stories comes from actually. Um, so this is perfect for the crime buff in your life, this is also perfect for the history buff in your life because again this is one that I never hear anybody talk about and I really rate it so feel free to buy it for your friend, family, secret crime buff or for yourself. 
final one I have um, because it is Christmas I suppose we ought to talk about something Christmassy uh, so Judith Flanders has come up trumps again with this so she's actually written a book called Christmas a biography uh, so this is a lovely little book about the history of Christmas uh, throughout throughout time basically um, but focusing very much on sort of the the traditions of Christmas and where they come from and yeah if you've got somebody who again is a history buff or if you just want to know more about Christmas um, in the past yeah this is a great little one to go it's a fabulous little gifted book that's perfect for this festive period <laughs> so I think that's everything um, I'm hoping that you've seen something there that you might be interested in. They're all great books. Um, it perfect for, as I say, gifting to yourself or to others. I will link everything down in the description if you want to see it. Um, otherwise, I don't know if I'll be back before Christmas, but if not, I hope you have a lovely festive season. I know life is tough right now. It's not easy to... Um, take joy in things especially if you're finding that the current situation wherever you are is preventing you from doing what you want to do or see the people that you love during this time but we will all get through it try and look after yourselves and take care and I'll see you all soon okay bye <laughs>